Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our OpenGL series. In this lesson, I'm going to go ahead and backtrack a little bit in a way, but I want to go ahead and talk about what I'm backtracking about. And previously we learned about using multiple vertex buffer objects, but this time I'm going to show you how to get multiple attributes, but just in one vertex buffer object. And the way that we're going to do this is by interleaving the actual attributes in a single vector. Now, reasons you might want to do this are arguable and you'd always have to measure, but it can sometimes be nice to only have to manage one vertex buffer object and avoid lots of different state changes, for instance. And you can just pack all of your information in one place. Again, it's going to vary on what you want to do, but it's helpful to know about. And sometimes it can simplify your code or just make it a little bit easier to pack data into one place and read all the information in. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at this lesson here and get started. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just go ahead and show you the layout of the code here. And we're going to be working in the main.cpp. And where we're going to be working here uh, in our source directory is specifically the vertex specification. Now, for those of you who haven't uh, been following along here, uh, this is how I have structured the actual programs here where we set up our window, then we set up the uh, vertices and the actual geometry that we want to ship to the GPU, create our graphics pipeline, that's with our shader code, and then run our application and clean things up. So again, let's go ahead and focus on the vertex uh, specification part of our code here and see how we can clean things up. So again, last time we created two different vectors here for setting up our data here. And this might be fine to do, but what I'm actually going to do is get rid of um, one of these uh, vectors here. And I'm essentially just going to interleave uh, this data here. So I'm just going to put in uh, color information here. And I'll just label it just so it's a little bit more uh, clear for me to remember. And just copy and paste it in here. I'm going to copy this in here and paste it in here, being a little bit careful. Um, and just setting things up that way. So again, what we previously had was one vertex array object. This was our VAO. And we had a position, attribute, and color. And those pointed to separate buffers that had x, y, z position, and another separate buffer that had R, G, and B information. But this time what we're going to do is still have our VAO. It's still going to have position here. And it's still going to have color. But it's going to look a little bit different in the sense that the position data is all going to be stored alongside the color data in one vertex buffer object here. So I'll have X, Y, and Z followed by R, G, and B x, y, and z, again, followed by r, g, and b, x, y, z, etc. So the position data will point to this block here, and then it'll know to offset to the next piece of data here. So essentially what I've got here is all the attribute data here. One vertex is r, g, b, and, uh, or let me write this in order here, is x, y, z, and RGB data here. It'd be six floats, and then we know to hop to the next set of data here, which is our next vertex here. Okay, so that's the idea. And the real trick or key to this is gonna be here uh, with our actual attrib uh, pointer here. So here we're actually going to um, have to set up the stride here. So last time we said, well, there was no sort of jump that we had to make, but this time we're going to have to take into consideration where that jump is and where our offset is. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into it. Again, um, just looking at our code from the top, if you're following along, I have um, interleaved our position and our color information. And again, this is gonna be for the first vertex. This is the information for the second vertex, and this is the information for the third vertex. And now we can actually uh, simplify our buffers here a little bit. So we just need to generate one buffer. Um, in fact, I'm going to uh, go ahead and get rid of our second buffer in the code here. And we also had a global up here for our second buffer. And now I can delete that. So we just have one here. Okay, so let me go ahead and hop back here. Okay, so again, just walking through this um, from our vertex positions, 
uh, again, we're going to set up our vertex array object just as we have previously. That hasn't changed because that, again, we, this is our goal here to still create this thing that has position and color information. Okay, so we're still going to use the same vertex array object setup. We're still going to just generate uh, one buffer this time, except again, it's going to have all of our position and color data. We'll bind to that buffer. And because we're using the vertex uh, or excuse me, the vector container in C++, it makes it really convenient because we don't really have to change any of this uh, code here. Although I might want to rename this vertex positions to um, something else like vertex data just because it's uh, now um, not just position data here. So let's go ahead and just make that change here just for clarity. Um, I think that'll be useful in future lessons as well. So now this is just our vertex data or vertex uh, spec or, or however you want to label it would be fine here. OK, so again, this stays the same. We're going to have, uh, well, we have uh, R, G, and B, uh, X, Y, and Z, so six floats per vertex, so 18 of those, and then however many bytes are in a float, usually four, so 72 bytes of information. This is our actual array. And how we're going to use this, well, we're just going to have a static uh, triangle. OK, now let's get into the interesting part, which is our uh, attributes here. So again, for our zeroth attribute, or the first one position here, um, again, uh, we have three components, because I have x, y, and z. And the stride, so how do I get to the next component? Well, let's actually look on uh, docs.gl, because we haven't opened that for a while, to see what that means. So I'll go ahead and just bring in another window here. Let's look at gl vertex trib uh, pointer. And we want to get some practice, again, using this documentation. And let's go ahead and make this bigger here, just because we want to see um, the actual uh, stride. So this is the byte offset between consecutive generic vertex attributes. OK, if the stride is 0, the attributes are understood to be tightly packed together. That would mean that we just have x, y, and z followed by x, y, and z. But in this case, again, we have x, y, and z. And then we need to jump past R, G, and B data. OK, so we are going to have to change this. And likewise, um, the offset to get to the first component is also going to have to be changed here. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, hide this for a moment. Let's keep our picture. Again, what is our stride going to be? Well, we have to hop three floats here. OK, so how do we do that in code? Well, typically, we just say size of our type, which is GL float. That's what's in our vector and three uh, items that we have to hop. And then the offset for our very first component, well, it starts at the very beginning here. I would call this you know, position 0 or byte 0. So we don't really have to do anything here for attribute 0. All right, now let's go ahead and look at our next attribute here, which is our color information. And let's go ahead and just label this color information. And it's the uh, next attribute. So again, we've got attribute 0 here and attribute 1. And still three things, R, G, and B. Uh, the information I'm saying is not going to be, to be normalized. Um, but now we need to actually think about um, our stride here. How do I get to the next R, G, and B value? OK, so how many bytes would I have to hop here once I get to the end of uh, my R, G, and B? OK, so here, again, I need to hop, well, the same amount here. And it's possible that you would have you know, gaps in between here or maybe even other information. Uh, but in this case, it happens to be that we have um, the same hop to make. So uh, three floats, or uh, very likely this is 12 bytes. Now, the offset this time we do actually have to uh, pay attention to, because we're not starting at uh, the zeroth uh, position here. So we again just need to figure out, well, how many bytes do we have to jump here to get to our first R, G, and B data? So that is, how do I get to uh, this position here? Well, I need to jump past three uh, floats here. So I'll go ahead and uh, just pause it for a second if you want to quiz yourself and see how uh, if you can do this. And if you've paused it and done the exercise, well, what is our uh, offset going to be? Well, similarly, GL float, the size of that, OK, times 3. Let's go ahead and um, try to uh, run this here. So I'll go ahead and compile it. And hmm, looks like I got a little bit of an error here. 
So let me go ahead and uh, take a look at this. And I think I need to wrap these in parentheses. And now if I compile, it compiles. And I actually want to talk about this last line in uh, a moment here um, from the documentation here. Because it says we need an actual pointer here. Okay, so it specifies an offset. Um, and that's how many sort of bytes. So it's it's an address that we're actually working with. So again, if I come here and look at this, it's a you know GL void star pointer. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, improve our code just a little bit here and use GL void here. And I think that should do uh, the same trick here. And now I can run it. And now I should get uh, pretty much the same thing here. Now, oops, looks like I moved one of my triangles or maybe swap something, uh, but our code is actually running here. So let's just go ahead and play with our vertex data here a little bit just to get things um, more in order. And let's see here. If I go ahead and run this, um, oops, I think I uh, actually made a little mistake here, which is a good mistake uh, to make here um, on our actual, uh, let me read the documentation carefully on our stride here. Um, because a stride is, yes, the number of um, bytes between consecutive vertex attributes, so not individual attributes. Um, so actually, uh, I've got to make a correction here um, to our illustration here. Um, how many things are we actually jumping you know, from the start to the end here? Well, from this X, I've actually got to jump over six floats here. So that's the actual stride. And if I have my offset here for our second attribute, well, if I jump, you know, six... Um, things here um, to get to the next sort of uh, vertex, uh, then that'll put me in the uh, correct position. So let's go ahead and uh, make a fix for that. Let's go ahead and make this a six. And both of these are sixes. Recompile because I'm making changes to my C++ code. And if I rerun this, now we get our actual triangle here. So a little bit of a mistake on my end um, and just how I was explaining that. But again, uh, the stride is, you know, how many things do you have uh, packed together? X, Y, and Z, R, and R, G, and B. And then that makes it easy because then all we have to do is really worry about the offset. And if we were to add a third attribute here, we'd have to come update the strides of each of our um, pointers here to each of our attributes. And again, that's how do we, you know, jump through all of this uh, information and then just change the offsets if everything's packed together um, as it is uh, illustrated here. So I'll just go ahead and run that one more time because it's nice to uh, look at here. Um, and that's uh, it for this lesson, folks. Um, so this was a fun one. This is another way to look at how we can just pack things together in one vertex buffer object. Again, OpenGL gives us a lot of flexibility to do this. And there might be different trade-offs, again, regarding performance or just how you're reading in your information for why you might want to do this. I'll leave that up to the pros to benchmark. Um, but for now, you can do it either way uh, as you're learning OpenGL. And now you know uh, how you can do it. So with that said, make sure that you uh, subscribe so you don't miss the future lessons that are coming. And we'll see you soon in the next video.